That's why they don't like me being so outspoken. No. And when you disagree with these black supremacy, right away they say you are Uncle Tom. No, I'm Jesus only. That's it. Things like, you know, how can you say that America has been Christian when America did dot, dot, dot? Folks, don't fall for that. We're not saying that everybody in the nation is Christian. We're not saying that everything the nation does is Christian. We're saying that the general ethos from the founding on was rooted and grounded in Christianity. Negroes like Geno Jennings and Vody Balcom inwardly have been remade in the image and likeness of the so-called unregenerate white man. Those of them who have not been born again to the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. But they continue unrighteous business as usual in the deeds of their forefathers who perished under the spell of Satan through the deceitfulness of riches. So when token Negroes like Gino and Vody attain some prominence or stature within the godless, profane system of white supremacy, they despise controversial subjects in the scriptures that push back against the status quo. Christ said, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Rather that be money, accreditation, big crowds and church buildings, they must omit from their sermons the forthcoming judgments against white supremacy or Esau, which is written in the scriptures. Therefore, they remain at enmity with the truth for the sake of filthy lucre. Okay, so in part one of this series, we identified Jacob and Esau. Okay, they're physical, circumstantial, geographical, economical descriptions. Okay, as well as the biblical timeline of things. Okay, as promised, I will break down the earth's lease agreement, faith deficit of the Gentiles. Okay, the outstanding sin debt of reparations. And also carrying the weight of the gospel of Christ Jesus, which is the most important thing. Okay, so lease agreement. The scripture state in Joel chapter 9 verse 24 that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Okay, so this is the lease agreement between the nations and God himself over the earth. And again, as I stated in part one in Second Estras chapter six verse nine, it refers to Esau as the end of the world, and Jacob the beginning of that that follows. So Esau at the end of the world, okay, and we see these things manifest in this. We we live our lives on a daily basis. Okay, the laws that they, they pass going against the laws of God. Okay, male and female created he them. Okay, the, the amount of capital murder that this nation commits. Okay, the innocent bloodshed. They're violating the terms of the lease of agreement. And really, the lease agreement is for all men who have their turn ruling over the earth is Genesis 3. We were created crush the head of the serpent. Of course, we do that in Christ Jesus. It, it is Christ who gave us the keys to the kingdom. What are the keys to the kingdom? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Okay, so we all have our weight of the gospel. You see what I'm saying? To be fighting against the scripture state, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Okay, the rulers of the darkness of this age. These are this is the one of the greatest curses of Adam is that you will be fighting against an enemy that you cannot see tangibly. Okay, and because we cannot see these evil spirits, it takes faith. To fight the good fight of faith <laughs> and to please God, the whom cannot be pleased without faith. You see where I'm going with this? This is a part of the weight of the gospel. Okay, the lease agreement. 
the lease agreement is to bring righteousness into the earth, not to be passing the anti-abortion laws and, and supporting my body, my choice. Okay, that, that's just a vague depiction what I mean by lease agreement. I can give a thousand other things that current dominant society has violated according to the Holy Scriptures of God, which explains the lease agreement. Again, I'm using earthly terms. Okay, so those of you who are technical, don't come to me saying, where can I find lease agreement in the Bible? Okay, these are the terms that the Holy Spirit gave me to use so that you may understand when you're in a lease agreement, or I don't know, even if it's a mortgage, okay, there are terms and conditions of the contract that you cannot break, okay, or you will suffer the penalty. Okay, so again, how much more is it the God of heaven and earth who created man? to establish their own ways of governance. Well, what happens when you violate his terms and conditions of the earth's lease agreement? Okay, there's a penalty to pay for that, a grave penalty to pay for that. All right. So as I stated in part one, it's essential we identify who the dominant society is according to the scriptures. Therefore, I talked about Esau in Genesis. He's described as red and hairy with Caucasoid features, okay, because he's from the Caucasus Mountains, the mountains of Khazaria, Mount Seir, okay. Because he sold his birthright, he was cursed from God for 4,000 years until he arrived his descendants arrived in Rome. Okay, so to this day, his descendants are Caucasians, so-called white people. Okay, these people spearhead the time of the Gentiles, which Christ talked about, which shall be fulfilled. He talked about this in Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Okay, so the lease agreement for the Gentile nations will be terminated when God destroys the earth, according to Revelation chapter 18, verse 17. Okay, it states in one hour, all their riches came to nothing. I'm going to read from Ezekiel chapter 35, verse starting at verse 3 through 9. It says, thus says the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against you. I will stretch out my hand against you and make you most desolate. Okay, that's destruction, eviction. Okay. I shall lay your cities waste and you shall be desolate. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Because you have had an ancient hatred and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by the power of the sword at the time of their calamity when their iniquity came to an end. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will prepare you for blood and blood shall pursue you since you have not hated blood Therefore, blood shall pursue you. Okay, now there are some who may say, well, these things have happened already. Yes, Babylon fell because they afflicted Israel as well. They, they had their own lease agreement that they failed to uphold. According to the stand, standards, the statutes, the ordinances, the commandments of the Most High God. Okay, but as you read the scriptures, you have to use discernment and look at where these nations are being mentioned again. Okay, the uh, uh, book of Revelation talks about spiritual Egypt, spiritual Sodom. It's it, then we hear for the first time 
Mystery Babylon. Okay, in the Old Testament, it wasn't referred to as Mystery Babylon. You see what I'm saying? So you can't use this whole cop out and suggest that these things have already taken place. But actually, that's a contradiction because if God judged those nations for the wickedness that they did during the terms of their lease agreement, then he ought to judge this nation as well. Okay? And why would God be so fixated? The scriptures are filled, especially in the books of prophecies. Okay, your Ezekiel's, your Isaiah's, and Jeremiah's, and Obadiah's. These, these books are filled with prophecies that have yet to take place. So why would God be so fixated on things that have already transpired? If these things are not to come, especially when you look at the, the way that he explains it, he says, I will prepare you for blood, verse six, and blood shall pursue you since you have hated blood. Therefore, blood shall pursue you. This is talking about slavery. This is this is talking about the oppression that has taken place, and particularly over the last 300 years. Okay, verse 7. Thus, I will make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it the one who leaves and the one who returns. Now, when it's, it says Mount Seir, it's not talking about the mountain itself. Okay, this is sort of a half parable. Okay, it's talking about the origin of where Esau laid his nest in the mountains. Speaking of the people that resided in Mount Seir, that their origins are from Mount Seir. Okay, how do I know this? Because the children of Israel were never in Mount Seir. Okay, so how can you, the children of Israel, were in the, the, the land of Canaan that God gave to them, which became the nation of Israel. Okay, the land flowing with milk and honey. All right, Esau, again, had a 4,000-year faith deficit. So if we're to just look at this according to the Old Testament, when this prophecy is given here in Ezekiel chapter 35, then you'll you'll be misled into thinking, it took place in the day that Ezekiel actually lived. <laughs> okay. And that this prophecy took place shortly after he wrote it. And that's not the way that it worked. God gives prophecies thousands of years in advance before it takes place. Sometimes it's hundreds of years in advance. Sometimes it's immediately thereafter. But not the case with this in verse 7. So verse eight, he says, and I will fill its mountains with the slain on your hills and in your valleys and in all your ravines. Those who are slain by the sword shall fall. OK, now God did destroy physical Mount Sierra, but this is speaking in parallel with history that's going to repeat itself. If that makes any sense. Okay, because Esau, Esau, the man himself and his descendants eventually passed away. But that prophecy had to be fulfilled on ancient Esau as well. So he had to perish by the sword because they lived by the sword. Okay, but the problem is his descendants, instead of repenting, they keep replicating the sins. Their, uh, their forefathers, which provokes the anger of the Lord. So Ezekiel is speaking in two different time periods, one to come and one that already was in the process of being fulfilled and had already been fulfilled, if that makes any sense. Okay, so verse 9 says, I will make you perpetually desolate. Okay, perpetually means ongoing. It's not just going to stop there. 
and your cities shall be uninhabited. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, this is serious stuff. Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 1 through 4 says, The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, Wail, woe to the day, for the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, the time of the Gentiles. The sword shall come upon Egypt, and great anguish shall be in Ethiopia when the slain fall in Egypt, and they take away her wealth, and her foundations are broken down. Okay. Again, the time of the Gentiles. This Christ again brings this up in Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Okay, so we know that this because Christ mentioned it, but the Ezekiel mentioned it a thousand years prior, that this is not taking place. Okay, because Christ, even when Christ mentioned it, it still hadn't taken place. Okay, and I already gave you Revelation chapter 18, verse 17, which states, In one hour, all their riches came to nothing. Okay, you got to keep in mind, <laughs> how does that happen? How does all their riches come to nothing? It's not just talking about God destroying the earth. Okay, although he, he will do that. All right, with fire, but it's also speaking about bank accounts. Okay, bank accounts. That this is why Satan used man to create everything digitally. Okay, because it can be deleted just like that. You see that? Jeremiah 46 28 says, Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, says the Lord. For I am with you, for I will make a complete end of all the nations to which I have driven you. But I will not make a complete end of you. I will rightly correct you. Okay, so you got to look at the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and all those curses that came upon Jacob, who is Israel, his descendants. Okay, God is, is letting us know. That these people are scattered, okay, and they are scattered for a correction. That's to this day. They are scattered throughout the nations. They, they are not supposed to be in Israel. God kicked them out of, of the, the territory Israel, okay? He says, I will rightly correct you, for I will not leave you wholly unpunished. Now, this is not to suggest that, you know, just because they had a skin color and the heritage of Israel, that our people are not going to be judged. Because remember, Christ warned our people not to go into the way of the Gentiles. So now when we get to the New Testament, God is talking about tares and wheat and letting them grow together. You see that <laughs> you're letting them grow together. I'm not down with all this foolishness of Hebrew Israelites. Just, just, I'm not down with that foolishness. All nations can be saved. Please understand what I'm saying. That's why that's why Christ said the tares and the wheat and the angels will have to pull up the tares from the wheat because the tares are going to be able to to masquerade as the wheat. Okay, in the New Testament, we are born again in Christ Jesus. Okay, so the Gentiles can be, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a modern day example. Okay, Bill Weiss is a man, Caucasian man, who was wealthy. And for the sake of the gospel, this man gave up all of that. And now he preaches nothing but hell, warning people about hell, okay? And I know from the amount of scriptures that he digests, I know that that's a lifestyle that he lives because I know how much studying 
it takes to digest those scriptures. And just to, to have a ministry where you're warning people about hell. So he's fulfilling his end of the lease agreement. But that's as an individual basis. Okay, I don't want people to get confused with the individuals because many so-called white people who are of the faith and have been born again, that God has redeemed them in their heart and changed their heart from the old nature. I don't want you to get confused thinking that this applies to all so-called white people. No, that's not what I'm saying. I don't preach that foolishness. I'm talking in terms of generational curses. Please understand that. Because God judged Israel the same way. There were many innocent people who did not partake in the sins of, of their, their kind. Okay? But God even got to the point at one time, he said, even if Moses and Samuel came before the altar of the Lord and sacrificed on your behalf, I would not hear your prayers. I got to destroy it. I got to destroy it, Israel. You see that. So when you're looking at it from the standpoint of not the individual, God, even to the point, he got to the point where the scriptures say it pleased him to bruise his own son, Jesus Christ. And he had to look away from his own son and bring judgment on his own son. You see what I'm saying? That's the reason why Christ had to die on the cross for our sins. It's a generational curse. You see what I'm saying? So please understand the magnitude of generational curses versus the individual curse upon an individual person who may be living righteous, but get caught up in the generational curse of things. Now they have to hear about the judgment on their people. You see what I'm saying? Versus the judgment on an individual person. That individual person may die and go to heaven. God will judge every man according to his own deeds. But there, there's also a greater curse. I talk about the greater curse of Adam. Okay, because Adam sinned, that one man sinning one time, now that curse comes upon all men. You see what I'm saying? Okay, we go to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, starting at verse 1. It says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mold your fields, verse 4. This, it doesn't get more detailed than this. Let's identify, okay, who are these laborers who mold their fields because it's the severity of the judgment that's coming upon these people who reap the benefits from the laborers, okay? Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mold your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. Verse 5, you have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. See, this is, again, now we're in the New Testament. These things have not happened yet. He's speaking of what is to come. It has not happened in the scriptures yet. In the time that James would have been living in the time before that, it has happened in our time through slavery. But he's speaking in their time, at that time to come which has been fulfilled and which has been ongoing to this day. Okay, verse six, you have condemned, you have murdered the just, and he does not resist you. 
See that? The, these judgments have to be fulfilled. Okay, and when we're looking at God's standard, he says, to whom much is given, much is required. Okay, now I give you the earth. I gave you this lease agreement. Okay, let's see what you do with it. Instead, you, you come and create all of these laws to rob people of their wages. Okay, you do all of these things against the innocent, the, 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 the children, all of the aborted babies who would have grown to be men of God and serve me with righteousness. You make sure that they didn't have a chance since they entered the womb. You didn't. You made sure that they were not birthed. Therefore, these these are judgments. You see that? Okay. And we go to Jeremiah chapter twenty-two, verse thirteen. It says, "Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service." without wages and gives him nothing for his work. Why you don't preach that, Geno Jennings? Okay, then we go to Isaiah chapter 24, verse 5 and 6. It says, The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants. See, the earth has a lease agreement. Then and God is looking at the, the damages, okay, and uh, calculating the cost, okay, that you will be charged with for what you've done to the earth. Okay, it says the earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, therefore the curse has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Okay, therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. This has not happened. God has not destroyed the earth by fire yet. Okay, rapture and tribulation, all these things have not happened yet. This, this is going to be the judgment. Remember, Revelation 18 talks about how all their riches in one hour came to nothing. Yeah, it's talking about destruction by fire. Okay, deleted bank accounts. The bank accounts will be just deleted. Why do you think the book of Revelation also talks about how man will seek death and not find it? They're going to be committing suicide because they have faith deficit. Their forefather, Esau, was not a man of faith. So they're not thinking about, the. they're only thinking about what they have now on the earth. They're not thinking about the judgment of God until it's too late. Okay, so now we have context. We can understand that. Christ in Luke chapter 6, 20, verse 24, was not being vague when he said, woe to you who are rich. Okay. So in the day of the Lord, God will destroy the nations who, who, who have their infant children and earthly possessions in their homes. Okay. Now, if we looking at the sinful man under this justice system, they will want to prosecute God. For capital murder, okay, for criminal property damage and terrorism, okay. Well, the babies go to heaven with God anyway, okay. But who will stay his hand, as the scriptures state? Who will stay God's hand and, and say to him, what hast thou done? Okay, you can't question God. In the books of 1st and 2nd Kings, God often referred to King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, as the pioneer who made Israel sin. When he, dest when he destroyed and brought that curse upon Jeroboam's household, saying the dog shall eat his, 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 his flesh, shall eat his children, and all those who belong to him, all of his descendants. 
they shall eat, eat him in the cities, and the birds shall eat them in the fields. Okay? There were women and children who suffered a curse because of his, that one man's sin. Okay? King over Israel. To whom much is given, much is required. Okay? So, that was a penalty they had to suffer. This is, this is what this, those scriptures mean when it says, Who can say to God, what hast thou done? Okay? Because of the, in, the, the God will destroy the innocent because of the sins of their fathers. You see what I'm saying? Therefore, there is no escape saying, well, I, I, I had nothing to do with what my father, I'm giving you evidence here in the scriptures. Yes, innocent people were penalized for the sins of their forefathers. Christ had to die for the sins of all humanity. Okay, so these are all examples of innocent being penalized for their forefathers. There's no escaping the judgment, okay? The same way four of David's sons died because of his sin, okay? It did not stop there. God e eventually evicted the entire nation of Israel, primarily because of kings Jeroboam, King Ahab, and King Manasseh, okay? So now that I've given you framework for the earth's lease agreement and the outstanding sin debt of reparations that are owed by the Gentiles, particularly Edom, Esau, okay, I will explain the faith deficit and the weight of the gospel and how it relates to the Gentiles. Okay, I'll have to do it in the next video. So stay tuned.